Hey everyone, so I want to quickly look at, this is our last lecture uh, for the colonization unit. We looked at the north, the south, and the middle colonies, um, and but I want to see how these colonies grew and how they affected us as Americans going forward, how these values, um, their morals, and their ideas kind of spread going into the future. So really what the analogy here would be is that the seeds were planted in these colonies um, that grew and matured and became increasingly American. That is, they set the values, the ideas, um, and really the doctrines that would become um, part of our American society. We talked about early in the class, what makes us American. Um, a lot of these ideas and things were planted in those colonies as we've tried to, as I've tried to talk about, as I've tried to show you in each um, region of this. These ideas started to grow from that and they'll increasingly become important. We'll see these themes throughout this year. Of course, one thing about American society is we're diverse. Um, you know, the European countries that these settlers tended to come from were not, they were pretty homogenous. Uh, they, the populations tended to look like each other, tended to be like each other. They didn't come from diverse religious backgrounds, diverse ethnic backgrounds. Um, so in 1776, English settlers, English settlers made up 50% of the population. So it was incredibly English, um, but also Scots, Irish, German, Dutch, French, and others were all considered American um, as we're moving on into the revolution. There's just several different ethnicities, different cultural backgrounds. And as we've learned in the colonies, uh, these people bring different ideas and different um, values to America. So it wasn't just nationality that made the colonies diverse. Race, racial background, also made the colonies a diverse place. 50,000 African Americans made up 20% of the population by the later colonial period. Growing separation between North and South was also becoming apparent. African Americans made up 50% of colonists in the South, but only 5% of colonists in the North. Americans were also getting wealthy. Um, we talked about a lot of the reasons that people came to America was to um, into the colonies, was to try to create a life of their own, try to um, start living out that idea of the American dream. And that was happening. Compared to the British, they were 20% richer. Uh, they were two, per two inches taller and they lived longer. So that's showing they're eating a healthier life. They're living a healthier lifestyle. They're getting more food. Um, they're getting a richer variety of food. Um, and so that's that's what's adding to that height and living longer. Um, so they're more well off than having left British, having left England and other um, European countries. So and this is kind of a theme going forward in American history and in American society is the idea of money. Um, we got the guy burning a hundred dollar bill, light a cigar. That's a very American idea. Um, the pursuit of money. So in these colonies is where you begin to see the idea of America as the land of opportunity. Um, of the, the, the seeds of the American dream. Uh, you can come here and make a life. You can make a living. You can um, move from the lower class, from poor to the middle class and even the upper class. And George Taylor actually um, is a really good example of this. George Taylor uh, was sold off as a boy to indigenous servitude by his father in England. He came to America as an indigenous servant, um, spent his time as an indigenous servant, and he became very skilled in the iron trade as a servant um, and moved to be a skilled craftsman, owned his own shop and continued to move up in society until he was one of the signers of the Declaration of Independence. So he started off an indentured servant and moved all the way to signing America's um, separation with um, Declaration of Separation with England. So it really shows how you can move up in society. Um, and so this 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 land of opportunity kind of continues to exist as 30% of the colonists lived on the frontier. So that's the western frontier in the Appalachians. They're pushing, um, moving west, taking advantage of free and cheap land there. But they aren't living in the civilization. The civilizations on the coast in New York, Philadelphia, um, the cities there, they're pushing farther and farther, deeper in, trying to find that opportunity. And this is, will be a continued theme as we move forward in this course, um, is the idea of westward expansion, the idea of opportunity moving farther west into the United States. So another pillar of American society is the idea of freedom. Um, so these people having moved from England and from Europe, settled in a world where it took, you know, 
months to get back and forth. Um, this is a lot of freedom they had. They had a lot of freedom to do things on their own, uh, and they became used to this economic and social freedom. Uh, and so, um, and they became used to owning land and having property, other things like that. Two thirds of freemen own their own land. Um, so this becomes a big part of that: the freedom, the right to own your own property, to own your own land, um, to be able to control your way of life, and also the freedom of religion. So Puritans, Huguenots, Jews. Catholics, Quakers, Presbyterians, and other um, become accustomed to this religious freedom. So we've learned these people moved to different areas and kind of got used to the idea that they could practice their religion freely. So another idea of freedom is represented in the story of Peter Singer here. Um, Peter Singer was a uh, printer and journalist in New York City. He printed the New York Weekly Journal. In 1737, he was accused of libel, which is basically seditious, slan seditious libel. is basically slandering someone because um, he criticized New York's governor, William Cosby. Um, and so he had been criticizing the governor. The governor charged him with seditious libel. And the jury determined that he had the freedom of speech. Um, he had the right to criticize the governor. And so this became a symbol of um, the freedom of the press, and this would become one of the pillars of American society, a free, right of free press, the right to criticize your, um, your leaders. So the Americans also got used to having political rights. Um, they had a kind of a situation which, which, which was known as salutatory neglect. Um, that is the British crown um, policy towards the colonies uh, kind of avoided strict enforcement of parliamentary laws meant to keep British colonies obedient. Um, so basically, they let the colonies self-rule, um, that the, these colonies created their own legislators and kind of ruled themselves rather than the crown enforcing the laws of England and of Britain upon the colonies. Um, and so 60% of free males could vote in the colonies versus 5% of British. Um, males. So think about that. That is over half compared to only 5%. So one in 20. Um, that is a huge difference in the amount of people who could vote and the amount of people who could participate in government. And so it became the idea of um, political freedom of political rights. And these American colonies were growing bigger and stronger. By 1776, America was no longer a collection of isolated communities struggling to survive. As we saw in like Jamestown, the Massachusetts Bay Colony, this was a massive area. Um, they had grown immensely. 2.5 million people lived in the American colonies, and they produced 30% of the goods in the entire British Empire. Um, so this is a very powerful colonial, um, colonial establishment. Many of these colonists were growing frustrated with the situation. Um, you know, they were producing that much. They were big. Um, they were powerful. And so by, 70, by 1760, Americans began to see themselves as separate and distinct from their mother country. They began to identify as Americans and not British or um, Scots-Irish, etc. They began to see that they had their own area. Um, and there was also a growing bitterness with the system of mercantilism, which had existed in the British Empire. You could see here, this is a good, um, a good cartoon illustrating the, um, the argument for colonial expansion. With a bit, you can see here the colonies bringing gold and silver foodstuffs and raw material to the mother country. You can see a representation of what looks like the queen sitting there waiting for all the stuff to be brought to her. Um, so British, the Americans were growing frustrated with this idea. Um, they didn't want to serve the British anymore. So another important aspect that was happening um, in the mid 1700s was the Great Awakening. These were religious uh, revival that kind of swept through the colonies in the mid 1700s. Um, what happened is uh, preachers and these ideas, these Christian revivalists would travel around and preach. Um, George Whitefield uh, went around the 13 colonies preaching um, religious doctrine, preaching Christian, Christian doctrine to people. And um, Jonathan Edwards is maybe the most important um, colonial the, uh, theologian, um, and he's kind of credited with creating the First Great Awakening. Um, basically, Jonathan Edwards wrote a famous seminar, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God, criticizing the people of the colonies, criticizing how they lived, um, creating a lot of imagery of hell, of fire and brimstone. Um, and he traveled around talking and teaching this sermon to people, kind of scaring people, um, but it was very effective. People began to try to live a religious life again. Um, you know, Edwards was a came from a Puritan background, um, but he's spreading this religion. This also is the um, 
the seeds of the rise of Baptist and Methodist domination, denominations, also the idea of evangelical um, denominations, evangelical going out and spreading the gospel, um, going town to town, not just creating that religious community, but really spreading, having a great awakening. So another really important idea, and the final one I'll hit on, is the idea of natural rights. Uh, this was becoming an important idea in the colonies. Uh, this came from the writings of John Locke, who was an English philosopher in the 15th century and the 1600s. Um, and Locke argued that each person is born with um, as a unique individual and has certain natural light, rights given them to them by God, um, so that no matter, no one can take these rights away from you. Um, and so these can't be taken away from your government, by your king, by someone who owns it, who rules over you. Um, and so these are these ideas become really influential in the colonies and are really influential going forward, particularly in Thomas Jefferson's writing of the Declaration of Independence. Um, all men are created equal. Um, the idea of born with certain inalienable rights. Uh, so we will see these themes as we go forward, as we look into the ideas of a revolt against the British crown, of the American Revolution, and of forming a government um, so-called for the people, by the people. So thanks for listening.